Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really does make a difference. Celia would like to introduce you to Puye Oke, who prefers to be known as Dennis Scott. How are you from? he asked. A mixed question, if ever there was one. To which Celia replied, I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm cool, thanks for asking, he said. You've got a cute name, Celia. That's very kind of you, said Celia. It's my pleasure to meet you here, Celia, he said. Where originally are you from and where do you live? I live in Durham in the northeast of England, she said. Why do you want to know where I'm originally from? Are you looking for people from a specific place? Not really, he said. I'm from Aarhus, Denmark, but have spent almost all my life in the USA. I live in Cleveland, Ohio, but currently at my place of work here in Norway. I seek for friendship with you which was why I wrote you. What do you do in Norway? asked Celia. That's here I work, he said. Yes, you said that's where you work, said Celia. What do you do? I'm a marine engineer. I'm currently serving in the oil platform, in brackets oil rig, here in Norway, but I'm on relief assignment because I'll be retiring very soon. What is your profession? Hi, she said. I'm an administrator. I work in the admissions department of Durham University. Once again, he said, it's really my pleasure to meet you. Are you married and do you have children? I'm a widow, said Celia. I have an adult son who lives in Sydney in Australia with his girlfriend. I'm surprised a beautiful woman like you can be single out there for this long, he said, having no idea how long this long is. I bet you must have be a very selective choice of a man. Go on, Celia, you tell him. I beg your pardon? She said, please think before typing. I didn't conveniently dispose of my husband so I could jump into bed with another man. I loved him very much. I'm sorry. OK, he said. How long has your husband be death? My husband died three years ago, she said. So sorry for your loss. What happened to him? He had a heart attack, said Celia. From what? he asked. What do you mean, from what? said Celia. What a stupid question. You told me he has a heart attack, right? said our man. Yes, he did, said Celia. What was he thinking that caused the heart attack? asked our man. What on earth are you talking about? said Celia. Are you one of those psychobabble idiots who thinks you can bring on a heart attack by thinking you might have one? Oh my goodness, he said. You misunderstood me, but it's okay. Misunderstood you, said Celia. Read what you typed. I really want to know what caused its heart attack, he said. My lost my dad the same way, too. And what was your dad thinking that caused his heart attack, asked Celia. The death of my mum, he said. And you've got to admit that for once he might have got one over on Celia. Good morning, he said the next day. How are you? And how was your night? Good, thanks. Yours, asked Celia. I'm great. Are you still in Norway, she asked. Yes, he said. Where in Norway? asked Celia. To which our man replied, We, in my case, I'm widower. My wife died of a leukaemia cancer six years ago, and I have just one daughter named Lucia. She's 16 years old and school in the state boarding school. And there's a clue right there that you're talking to a scammer, ladies and gentlemen. He launched straight into telling Celia his sob story without answering the question that she'd asked him or continuing the conversation that they were having. That's typical of a scammer. They can't have a conversation. They just ask you questions or tell you random facts about themselves. I asked where you are in Norway, said Celia. Oseberg, he said. So, what are you doing at the moment? Cleaning out the mouse hole in the dining room, said Celia. What are you doing at the moment? I'm thinking about you, he said. I really wish I could know you more better. That doesn't tell me what you're doing now, said Celia. I'm at the lunch table, eating lunch, she said. OK, said Celia, I guess you have a canteen. Are you on land or at sea? I'm at the sea, he said. So tell me, how long have you been here on Facebook? Have you date online before? And tell me about those you've met online. Exactly the kind of question that a gentleman asks a lady that he's literally just met. I have no idea how long I've been on Facebook, said Celia, and the rest is none of your business. How long have you been on Facebook? And tell me about those that you've met online. Don't try telling me that you've never met anyone online. I won't believe that. 
I am new here, he said, and to online dating. Registered some months back. Just decided to give it a try, and I contacted you. I really do not have so many clues on how online dating is done. Who said we were dating? said Celia. So I suspect that this scammer spends quite a lot of time on the dating apps, trying to find potential victims. As you can probably tell from the screenshot, he contacted Celia on Facebook and not through a dating group. I never say so. OK, he said. Only I don't know how online dating is being done. I'd love to see the sea, said Celia. If I video call you, could you show me the sea from your rig? Sure, he said. Do you mind if we exchange Gmail and talk over on Hangouts? And so, of course, they moved to Hangouts. Over on Hangouts, a man said, Hope you're OK. Communicate here with me. I'm here, aren't I? said Celia. If I video call you on here, will you show me the sea? That's good, he said. I will, but not now. OK? Oh, said Celia. I promise when I'm out, I will video call you. OK? Out, said Celia. Are you in prison? No, he said. You do not know more about my job. I will explain everything to you, OK? OK, said Celia. Out of what? The rig, he said. I guess you do not know more about rig. I don't understand, said Celia. Don't you just need to go up on deck or whatever oil rigs have? So he sent her a photograph of an oil rig. Did you just take that now? asked Celia. It was taken this morning, he said. OK, said Celia. Can't you go back there and show me the sea? No, he said. I can't. We'll have to do that later today. OK. Are you there? he asked a little bit later. I went to make a cup of tea, said Celia. I guess you're working. Yes, he said. OK, she asked. What are you doing? Back to work in my office, he said, while my boys are at the platform. Oh, Cecilia, you mean you sit in your office while someone else does the work? So he sent her a photo of a man sitting in a chair and said, yes. Ha ha, said Celia, nice to be able to let someone else do the hard work. I was awarded this last contract four months ago, he said, and right now I have only two months to get done with this contract and go home. What is your job if the boys do all the work? asked Celia. I'm a marine engineer, he said. I'm currently serving in the oil platform, in brackets, oil rig, here in Norway. But I'm on relief assignment because I will be retiring very soon. Yes, Cecilia, but what's your job if the boys do all the work? What do you actually do? A man came up with the usual rambling scammer answer because obviously they have no idea what jobs they're actually supposed to be doing. Our educated American man came up with this wonderful sentence. I handles contracts, both in the state and in other states or countries, to be precise. I have worked with Qatar Gas Company in 2000, Shell 2005, Chevron 2006, 2008, Egypt 1999, I had a lot of experience working under these companies in the past. In the middle month, June of 2008, I did act as a broker to an Warwick oil company that came from Spain to buy crude oil from Kuwait. Are you there? he said when he'd finished his ramblings. Yes, I'm here, said Celia. I asked what you actually do now, you know, on your present contract. So I'll try again. What is your job if the boys do all the work? What do you actually do? I'm a contractor and supervisor them, he said, once again showing that most of these scammers think that being a contractor means being the boss. OFGS, said Celia, how hard is it to tell me what you're doing? I know you're on a contract. What are the people you're supervising doing? Do you supervise the IT department? Do you supervise the canteen? Do you supervise the drillers? Do you supervise the quality control department? Who do you supervise? The maintenance team, the communications team, the health and safety team, the drilling department, he said. Phew, Cecilia. All you need to do is listen, he said, while I tell you all about my job. I've been waiting, said Celia. You just told me your employment history. That wasn't what I asked. Do you drill 24-7 or just at certain hours? I work 24-7 every day, OK, he said. Goodness, said Celia, don't you sleep at all? 
I only rest for some hours, he said. When I said, do you drill 24-7, said Celia, I meant, does your rig work 24-7 or just certain hours? I didn't realise you had to work 24 hours a day yourself. One thing you'll notice if you're talking to a scammer is their complete inability to continue any conversation along its logical lines. They will always do what this chap's about to do and interject a paragraph that simply doesn't follow from what you've said before, but is, of course, a copy and paste paragraph. Well, he said, my work has taken me to lots of places and I have travelled to two Africa countries for work. But right now, I'm currently working on my last contract here in Norway before getting retired for good. I have also been to many places in the USA just because of my work. But for all, I really enjoyed working in Africa because the people there was friendly and the sea was not as big as the one in Norway. So Africa is just not big enough. I wouldn't use it to compare Norway, but however, it was good. And if anyone can understand what he was trying to say there, please do tell me in the comments below. The sea in Africa isn't as big as the sea in Norway, asked Celia. What does that even mean? It means the sea in Norway is very big, he said. He had another paragraph to copy and paste and nothing was going to stop him. Well, I have been in this field for over four months and working with this company for more than four months now. But I will be quitting my job this time when I go off the rig because I want to get settled down again with the right woman by my side, having a complete family. How big is the sea in Norway, asked Celia. How big is the sea in Africa? Which two countries have you been to in Africa? You really shouldn't ask questions of these geographically challenged scammers. It's rarely a good idea. The two oceans that touch Africa, he informed her, are the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean, and have been there before. I'm surprised the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans are smaller than the sea off the coast of Norway, said Celia. You learn something new every day. Which countries in Africa have you been to? Algeria and DR Congo, he said. My main goals in life that I'm aiming to achieve in life is to get married and settle down, living a happy life with my family. The scriptural passage in the Bible that I love most is that of John 8.51, which says that if any man keep my word, he shall never see death. I'm family-oriented, open-minded, nice, fun to be with, more serious, playful, shy, easygoing. I'm not sure that I'd want to live forever, said Celia. Just imagine how long I'd have to work for. Imagine how long you'd have to go on watching these videos for. OK, he said. Life in sea is very risky. I just want you to have idea about my job. My daughter knows more about my job. Nobody visit me when I'm at work. Or even call me, because this oil machine is highly inflammable. And we don't use mobile phones or call when we're in field work. Are you saying you lied to me earlier, said Celia, when you told me you'd video call me later today? Why is using a mobile phone a fire hazard? That's just silly. You used one to take that photo this morning. I will take a risk and do that. OK, he said. OK, said Celia. When? Once I'm chance, he said, and no one is here with me. I will do that because there are security everywhere. OK, I could audio call you instead, said Celia. Yes, that would be fine. OK, he said. Can I do it now, she asked. Yes, he said. And so she called him. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me this time? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's nice to speak to you. Yeah, you have a very beautiful voice. Thank you very much. So, tell me about your oil rig. How long have you been there? Sorry, I can hear you. What do you say? I said, tell me about your oil rig. How long have you been there? I know you've told me, but... I've been there over four months. Yeah. And where were you before you started this contract? I was in Scotland. Oh, where in Scotland? What do you say? Where were you in Scotland? As I always say, asked a difficult question and our man's left the call. What happened, asked Celia? You disappeared. Our man took five minutes to Google. 
places in Scotland and then called her back. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yes, I was in Scotland. Yeah, where, where were you in Scotland? Aberdeen. All right, well, uh, on another oil rig offshore. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing? I'm sitting here talking to you. What are you doing? I'm just sitting talking to you, actually. You have a very beautiful voice. Yeah. So you must have been to lots of places. Yeah, I've been to lots of places so, so much. I really want to talk to you. I want to tell you all about myself. Yeah. How long have you been working on the oil rigs? Which, which of them are you talking about? Is it the one in Scotland or the one in Norway? No, how long have you been working on oil rigs? All my life. Uh, uh, how old are you? I'm 63 years of age. So you've been working on the oil rigs for what, 40 years? Yeah, before, before I became a contractor. Yeah, so you must have been to lots of places. Yeah, I've been to a lot of places and we have to text you all of them because most of it I can't even call any. Sorry, m most of it? I didn't hear what you said. Most of it? Yeah, I've been to most of places in, in the US, in some other countries, in France, Switzerland. So many places. All, so, all the nature of my world. Switzerland? Yeah, Switzerland. What, what? Have you been there before? Switzerland? Yeah, I went there for a visit. I went there for a holiday. Oh, right, not for work. Mm -hmm. I do travel out for, for the country for holidays. Oh, uh, yeah. Most times not, not very much. I've been to Spain a couple of times. Um, where else have I been? Been to France once. That's about it, I think. I've always wanted to do more travelling, but just never really had the chance. Yeah, I would love to travel to your place as soon as I'm done with my contract. What do you think about that? Well, it'd be, love lovely. it'd be lovely to meet you. Yeah, 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 yeah. My pleasure, the pleasure is so mine. I'm glad I found you. So, when are you finishing in two months' time? Yeah, in two months' time, we're done with my contract. I would love to pay you if it's as soon as I'm done. Yeah. So, you could come here after that, couldn't you? Yeah, I can come to your state and come and see you. What do you mean, come to my state? Yeah. What do you mean, come to my state? I'm coming to meet you in person. Yeah. Oh, you want to see me? What What do you mean, come to my state? You say what? I can't hear you. What do you say? I asked you, what did you I mean? I said I would love to come to your state. I would... Yeah. What do you mean by come to my state? To see you in person. Yeah. What do you mean by come to my state? I don't understand what you mean by that question. I said I would be coming to see you. Yes. You said you will come to my state. What do you mean by my state? You say you live in Duba. Say, so live in where? North east of England. No. So where do you live? So I can't really hear what you're saying. Because the network is so bad, let's shout on. Then we'll talk later on over the phone, okay? Yeah, okay. Bye for now. Okay. I couldn't hear what you said at the end. Sorry, said Celia. You said you live in Durham, in the northeast of England, he replied. Ah, oh, yes, I do, said Celia. Did you mean come to your city? Yes, he said. You have a very beautiful voice. And that's a very common thing that a scammer will say to you. You have a beautiful voice. I can't wait to meet you in person. Thank you, said Celia. You're welcome to come and visit. I can show you around Durham. That would be wonderful, he said. I'm sure you'll like it here, said Celia. We have a lovely cathedral and an old castle I can take you round. And then he sent her a photograph. Do you mind sending me a picture of you here, he said. My picture's on Facebook, said Celia. Yes, I know of that. OK, he said. 
It's the only one I share online, said Celia. I don't trust the internet. I would be glad if you can send me one of your picture here, he said. I just told you, said Celia. That's the only one I share online. I work at the university. We get lots of talks about not sharing photos online in case accounts are hacked and photos stolen. If you want to see me, you're welcome to video call me. OK, that's good. I understand. OK, he said. And then Celia went off to cook her dinner. He was back the next morning. What are your plans for today? he asked. He tried calling her, but Celia was on chat, not hangouts, and the two don't allow the calls to connect. You promised to call me back yesterday once you're done cooking, he said. Didn't I tell you, said Celia. A friend rang. She was on the phone for nearly two hours. I haven't seen her for ages. And then she changed to hangouts and he called her again. And it won't take you long to realise that Celia wasn't impressed by his skills as a father. He certainly isn't a candidate for father of the year. Hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, good morning. I'm fine, thank you very yeah, much. Good morning. I'm fine, thank you very much. How are you doing? So what are your plans for today? Uh, oh, not a lot. i probably um, do some gardening and uh, do some cleaning in the house and some tidying up, you know, that kind of thing. What are you doing? I don't, I don't normally work on Sunday. I do rest every Sunday, so I will just have to talk to you on the phone. What about that? Uh, well, I probably won't be, you know, online very much. So I do a lot of housework on Sundays. So what do you? So your kids doing? What, what do you do when you don't, when you're not working? I will just be watching TV. Yeah, in the ring. Oh dear, <laughs> how boring. Yeah, yeah. I will also talk to my daughter. That's all. Yeah. Because I don't have anybody else to talk to. Yeah. You, know, you don't have activities that you can do. You don't have a gym or a cinema room or, I don't know, snooker hall. I don't used to go there. Sorry? I don't used to go there. I love, I love being on my own. Oh, right. Okay. So you don't make your breakfast? Uh, well, I've got it here, but I won't eat it while I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, oh. I mix tea like snant. Sorry, say that again. I said I mix you. Oh, right. Now, my friend rang and she talked and talked and talked and talked. And she talk and talk and talk and you forget about me and you told me that you were going to come in once you are done with dinner. Yeah, as I say, my friend rang and we were, by the time she'd finished, I was decided it was time to go to bed. <laughs> I don't talk to her very often, but when I do, she uh, talks for a long time. Okay. Well. So how's your daughter? My daughter is fine. Her name is Lucy. I remember I told you. Yes, yeah, yes, you did. Yes. So what's she doing? She's a very at, wonderful daughter. What, what's she She's a very wonderful daughter. What's she doing at school? I don't know right now because I've not been with her except with your shirt, that's all. What, she doesn't tell you what she's doing at school? I don't, I, I don't used to ask her most of the time. She's always with her nanny. Yet, you're her father. You ought to know what she's doing at school. I will have to answer later today. Yeah, you will do. How old, right did, now you, she will be like, how old did you say she right is? Now she, right now she will be sleeping. Yeah. How old did you say she is? She's just 16 years old. Yeah. So, uh, in the UK, we do something called GCSEs at 16. What, what do you do in the States? Do they have exams? Does not. You don't have any exams at 16? She has an exam on 16, but that's not my business. That is all for her. I've already put her in the school, so she knows what to do. Is all, all I could do right now is just to provide for her need. That's all. It because I can't be there watching over her. It's none of your business what exams your daughter's doing. What kind of father are you? I'm very I'm very busy father. She knows of that. So I don't have most of the time to spend that. So I really want to get married so that my wife will be the one to take care of her and to notice our activities. So you're looking for a housekeeper and somebody to take care of your daughter because you can't be bothered to do it yourself. 
Is that what you're saying? I can't imagine what kind of father has so little interest in his daughter that he doesn't even know what exams she's doing. You don't, you, you, you don't understand. I think me and my daughter, we don't used to live like that. She's very stubborn. She don't tell me what she does. Um, I would imagine the school would tell you. What about parents' evenings? Don't they tell you at parents' evenings? Don't they send you a, a report at the end of each term or do you just not bother to read them? I don't bother to read them on my meal. You don't bother to read them. So well, that tells me what kind of father you are. <laughs> I, feel very, you don't know me. I feel very sorry for your daughter. That's horrible. You don't know my daughter, that's why you're sounding this way. No, I don't know your daughter. And I feel very sorry for her. I can't imagine not knowing what my Dan was doing when he was at school. That would have been unthinkable. I can see. I think it's time you... It's your last chance. You'll, you will lose her if you don't up your game and start taking an interest in her. I would do just that. I think you jolly well should. And I think you, you, at the very least, you need to talk to the school and talk to your daughter about what exams she's doing, how she's doing at school, um, because it won't be very long before she has to decide what she wants to do next. And if you don't even know what she's doing... Because if I ask you what your daughter wants to do when she leaves school, you're going to tell me you don't know, are you? Most of the time, she spends most of that days with her nanny playing game and football because she loves football. So you're quite happy to leave her to a nanny who's not even related to her and take no interest in her yourself? I don't know what more to do because in, to the nature of my work, I don't normally have time for her. Oh, that you don't, the reason have, why. You you don't like have time to talk to your own daughter and talk to her school. Good luck in finding a wife and a housekeeper who will do all the work for you. I'm not finding a housekeeper. I need that. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. my soulmate, someone that I will love, someone that is going to respect me, someone that I'm going to respect, someone that we can share our, our, our separate ways together and become one. Well, I can't imagine anyone respecting such a terrible father as you. Well, I can see that is because you don't know me. I'm such a lovely person. You don't know my daughter. That's why you're sounding this way. I do know you. You've just told me you don't even know what your daughter is doing at school. That's all I need to know about you. I think that's terrible. I, I just feel so sorry for your daughter. Don't worry. I have told her about you. As she said, she would love to talk to you, so both of you can talk to each other. Okay, well, I think that would be a good idea. You tell her and I'll talk to her. All right. Let me send that you me. Well, I'll get her on Hangouts and I'll talk to her. All right. She's too, she's too young for anger because most of the time she do communicate on me. Well, you can still talk to the school. You can talk to the nanny. Hasn't the nanny told you what she's doing at school? What do you pay the nanny for? Apart from playing games and playing football. I, I presume the nanny does know what she does at school. Yeah, the nanny, she, she loves her nanny so much because the nanny is from Philippines. Yeah, so why don't you talk to the nanny about what she's doing at school? When did you, Little, when did you even... To, I've not talked to the nanny because... Hello? When did you last even see your daughter? That should be six months ago. Six months ago? And you didn't, you didn't think to ask her or the nanny what she's doing at school or anything like that? All I can just do is drop a message on them on me, and when they reply, I got to read some of them. Most time, I have to leave them behind because I'm a very busy person. So the few I manage to read, I reply them back. Well, you that can't, is when I know my daughter. You can't be that busy. You've just told me that all you're going to be doing today is sitting in your cabin watching the television. Yeah, that is what I've been doing today. But remember that the time difference between me and UX. Uh, yes, which gives you several hours to talk to them later on today. Yeah, if I will be able to communicate with them, that should be around one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon at where I am. Yes, 
And how long would it take to ask the nanny, what's my daughter doing at school? And to drop the email, the school an email and say, please send me the report. And oh dear, I'm sorry, I haven't read any of the previous ones that you've sent me. Perhaps you should spend this afternoon reading your daughter's reports. You would do just that? Yeah, I think you should. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, we'll talk later in the day. You go make your breakfast while I call you back later. What about that? Okay. Hopefully you'll, okay, have read, hopefully you'll have read your daughter's reports by the time you call me back. All right. Okay. Okay, I'll take care. And you. Bye for now. Bye for now. Our man went off to do his homework. And remember, at the beginning of the video, I'm fairly sure that he said his daughter was in boarding school. So I guess the nanny doesn't have very much work to do. And I think that's a good place to end this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do by now. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Please comment down below. Please share it with your friends. And I'll see you again in episode two.